kind of a beautiful area. We've got a lot of nice natural resources very close to us. It'd be good to take care of those. My group is called the Creation Care uh, Advisory Council. And we work with the Environmental Club, which is a student group, of course. My group is administration, faculty, and students. Uh, and we try to just kind of talk about how we can better promote recycling. How can we promote Earth Day? How can we uh, uh, bring more awareness to the, the problems here? We are in the very, very early stages. Uh, we're just getting started and we're kind of behind a little bit. Um, and that's not necessarily anybody's fault. Just things come up on the radar at different times and in different places. But that's part of why I was asked to come here uh, is to begin getting this more, um, more visible on campus and, and to get a better understanding of it on campus. By the beginning of 2015, Mel Lockhart on campus had gotten on board with this and we're really trying to ramp up the effort to recycle. After I, I said one of the things that we can do is just simply recycle the way that we're supposed to, use our recycle bins and the students weren't doing it. The bins are out there in a lot of places. Now it's a matter of getting the students to care enough to actually use them properly. Um, and that's kind of a different battle. That's usually a harder battle. But I think we're getting better. It's maybe pretty typical, pretty standard of what you'd see if you went into an average office, env office environment where there had been blue cans placed in the offices alongside of the, the regular trash can. And then there were, there were recycling cans here and there. Um, they have kind of the funny lids on them with different shapes and it looks like maybe you should put a bottle here or maybe only paper here. But over time it just got a little confusing maybe and, and so really only those who really cared about recycling participated because it was probably confusing to everybody else. Paper, glass, aluminum, um, plastic bottles, all of it can go in the same recycling can now. So. One thing we'll have to change here at Tucker soon, it's just gonna be a little cost to it. You'll see the recycle cans that were built here are very nice. So um, they just have a, a little hole because that was how recycling used to be. It's pretty much just maybe a can or a bottle. Now we're gonna have to try to get those redesigned. So we want you to know that if you walk past a recycling can, more than likely what you're about to throw away is recyclable. So just remember, if you have a lot of liquid, it wouldn't be. If you have a lot of food leftovers, it wouldn't be. Um, but if you have a pizza box that's been cleaned out, it now is recyclable. Um, you know, if you've eaten it all, which is probably the case on the college campus, then throw that pizza box in the recycle. There is uh, uh, what's called single stream recycling, which is our, our uh, vendor takes it to a sorting facility, and there is um, amazing sorters that are able to take all of the recycle at once and kick out the proper items for to go to the proper place to be recycled ultimately. So it can kick out bottles over here, cans over here, and metal over here, and um, different uh, you know uh, paper over here. So it's able to, to sort it for us. Well, that had already been put into place, but um, it hadn't been properly communicated really across campus. So you still have the funny lids um, on things, and and so people still didn't really change their their habits to really understand that pretty much any recyclable material can go in the same can. And so what we've done is we've went into office environments. This has, hasn't always been very popular, um, but we're working through it, and it's and it's beginning to be accepted. And we're taking away in a in an office, we're taking away their desk trash can. Uh, and then we're giving them only the blue recycle can at their desk and then we're giving them materials which uh, tell them kind of what items are recyclable and how it all can go into one can. So basically we're teaching people that they didn't realize it before but almost everything they throw away in their office can be recycled now. Almost everything. I purchased maybe 200 new ones and we've just been putting them out as we realize we need a one here or one there. We want to make sure that that it's aesthetically pleasing and there's not really a budget for this. Um, I mean we have made a valiant effort at making the recycling better with no new budget you know. And, um, another challenge with that is 
with the single stream recycling, it has to be perfect. Well, not perfect, but it has to be pretty close. So when my housekeepers are working, if, because we can't really control what the public does. You know, we can label things, we can ask with our signs, but at the end of the day, if they take their, their gravy biscuit and their styrofoam container and toss it and the gravy goes everywhere, my housekeeper has to pull that and put it in the trash. So we, the same vendor that we work with for, um, for our solid waste, it handles our, handles our recycling. And so they take it to a recycling facility, um, a sorting facility, which is what they call the single stream facility. But basically they have big machinery with um, uh, lots of wheels and things that are able to sort and kick things out to the proper bins and proper places. And then they have different um, manufacturers or vendors that use those materials. And uh, that's increased, that's ever increasing. In fact, um, you know, obviously we have questions from time to time in the single stream vein as to, hey, is this recyclable? I'm, I'm getting ready to throw this away and I think it is, but I'm not sure. And I, I have to still defer a lot to our vendor uh, for new questions because that's changing all the time. And basically we're finding out, yeah, now that can be recycled. Right now we're asking people not to throw styrofoam away in the recycle, but uh, my vendor's telling me that there is actually probably coming very soon, they may be able to sort styrofoam in the same thing and have manufacturers that use it, and so it becomes recyclable. So it's growing, but that's what happens to it. It all goes to this one facility, then it's sorted out, and then different manufacturers that use those materials come pick it up and or purchase it, and then uh, it goes back into, the, into something else, becomes something else. We're currently averaging 6.21 tons of recycle per month. So that would be about 3,000 pounds a week. About 3,000 pounds a week. And that's up 53% from 2015. So 2015, we have been more around 1,200 to 1,500 um, pounds per week, and we're at about 3,000 pounds per week right now. So where we're different is that a university, perhaps with more funding, is able to do the recycling revamp in a more aesthetically pleasing way with really neatly designed containers and a huge marketing program in, uh, to, to, to do it with. And perhaps, um, in fact, I saw this firsthand at UNC Charlotte, they had an entire recycling team. I mean, it was budgeted labor to, to do it. We're trying to do it with the current housekeeping labor that we've always had. In a, I think we're doing a good job at it, but you know it'd be neat to see um, some allocated uh, resources uh, specifically towards recycling, in addition to the budget that was has always been in place for trash. You know, something that's uh, beneficial to all of us is that it uh, reduces the cost of our uh, handling of trash. And so, solid waste when you send off just regular trash, we pay uh, by the pound. Uh, for that to go away, and uh, whereas recycle, recycling, we don't fact they just uh, we we have a, a, a small charge just to haul it away, but they're not weighing it and charging. Well, they are weighing it, so we know how much we're getting, but they're not charging us for that weight. So we're saving lots of money. Uh, it's going to allow us to just produce less waste as a whole. Um, you're going to see less trash in the trash cans. You're going to see um, uh, people picking up recycling, which is a lot cleaner and easier than picking up garbage. Um, I hope it will encourage students to think more about not throwing their trash on the ground. And we have a little bit of a problem with that sometimes, and, and students will leave stuff in the parking lots, and I just hope it'll make people more aware that, you know what, that's probably not the best place to put my trash. Um, think about how much less goes into the landfill if we will recycle. And some people argue that recycle, well, it doesn't really do that much good. It's just as bad for the environment. I'm not seeing that. Um, you know, your landfills, when they go from being here to being here in about 20 years, that's not a good thing. The first goal though is to make it where housing, uh, we, we are taking care of recycling in the dorms and at the apartments in a, in a way that sees the numbers go up like we've seen it in the administrative buildings so that's our that's our biggest goal and then our second goal would be to um, 
although we've seen the numbers jump tremendously. In fact, I shared the numbers with UNC Charlotte. I was up there visiting theirs, and they were like, wow, that's huge. Um, but I still feel like we're missing out on some, even in the administrative classroom areas, and uh, perhaps the sports arena and things like that. So we just want to see that number climb. Um, and uh, so that's our second goal, is just to see the numbers continue to go up over the next year or so. All recyclable or compostable materials used in every cafeteria, shop, restaurant on campus. Um, again, I think we can do that without costing tons of money. And, and if we can do that, then I think we're going to make a name for ourselves in this. We're not here to solve it, we're here to kind of do what we can to make the world a better place, to make our campus a better place. Just think paper, plastic, glass, aluminum, and if you contaminate it, we rather you contaminate it from time to time and us discover that than for you to not try to join in the, in the process of recycling. When it comes to when we do uh, make an effort at the um, student level, specifically in housing, um, we just ask for um, for participation, and, and it won't be that bad, especially because of the availability now of this single stream idea. You really can assume, if you're about to throw something away, it's probably going to be recyclable, so just look for the recycle can. And I hope this is the kind of thing that will carry over into everybody's life. Like not only are you going to recycle when you're on campus at Gardner-Webb, but when you get out in the real world, you're going to be like, you know, I want to continue that. Students have power. Uh, when students raise their voices, when students say we need to do this, we need to make a difference, people listen. Faculty pay attention, administration pays attention, and other students pay attention. So I think the big key to this is getting the students to be interested enough in it to make it happen. If, that, if they raise their voices, then something's going to change and it's going to get better. A lot of students say to me, well, what good will it do? To recycle? What good will it do to turn my lights off? The question we need to start saying is if we always ask, well, what good will it do, then we'll never do any good.